What is up with the cancel culture? Steve here with another video. And today we're going to be talking about just that. What is up with the cancel culture? As I was explaining in my uh, last video about all of the movements that are taking place in our culture today, the uh, cancel culture is just uh, another in the line of, of uh, movements designed by people who want to inflict their own particular brand of justice on the world and on the uh, culture at large. Before this one, well, we had the Me Too movement. And like I said before, all of these movements usually, or at least sometimes, start out with good intentions. But Inevitably, they are used against a certain segment of the population to basically hinder free speech and basically to uh, oppress people with a false sense of justice towards them. If you notice in the beginning, the cancel culture was directed at individuals who, uh, for lack of a better term, were very blatant in their actions. Uh, think specifically about Bill Cosby and Epstein and others uh, like them who had uh, done some, you know, pretty bad things. And the cancel culture sought to uh, get them back with, uh, you know, a form of, of justice. And the strange thing about it is that uh, this cancel culture seemed, seemed to knock them out even before there was a trial. What it has now morphed into is a way for a certain people, and of course politics are involved, it's a, a, an attempt by certain people to quiet or, as the word goes, cancel people that they disagree with. And what usually happens is, is that they will go back into a person's past, maybe 20, 30, 40, even longer, to find something that this person did that either they don't agree with or, you know, something that perhaps was wrong back then, but they will now use it to basically cancel the person. And by cancel, I mean, make them lose their job, make them suffer in some kind of way. And I'm not even talking about uh, legally now, but sometimes just uh, putting out there that somebody did such and such is enough to either make that person resign from their position in embarrassment or to either leave their job or leave their career because they feel so much pressure, pressure from those who are complaining. And it's one of the ills, I think, of social media that people, sometimes even a small percentage of people, are able to express their displeasure and then have so much influence in the culture or in business or even in politics. But you might ask, well, what is the problem with cancel culture? And why do you think it is it is devastating to our society? In my opinion, the main problem of cancel culture is that it goes directly against uh, biblical principles, against how God would have us to react and deal with one another's faults and failings. You see, my friends, the Bible recognizes that we are all human and that we are all subject to failure. We are all subject to sin. We are all subject to making mistakes. See, when we have to look into a person's past and try to cancel them, that is directly opposed to how Christ dealt with us. Did not Christ say that he who is without sin cast the first stone? If you're perfect, this doesn't apply to you. But I don't think there are any perfect people in the world, which means, my friends, is that everyone has done something wrong. Everyone has done something that they would rather people not know about. You and I have done things that if brought into the light, we would be devastated. So for people to try to dig up stuff from a person's past and use that against him is neglect neglecting the fact that even God gives us grace. 
even God gives us forgiveness and even God gives us a chance to right the wrong or to ask for forgiveness, to ask for repentance and to make the wrong right. And now I'm not talking about something serious like murder or rape or any other, you know, heavy duty crime. But I'm talking about things that people say that they might not really mean, or maybe they do mean it, yet they realize the errors of what they said and have changed, made amends, have turned their lives around and become model citizens, model individuals, people to be looked up to and people to be emulated. So the cancel culture seeks to put uh, man's wisdom and man's judgment, judgment and justice above that which belongs only to God. And God gives us grace, God gives us forgiveness, and God gives us reconciliation. I don't see any reconciliation with the cancel culture. I don't see the cancel culture looking at the totality of people's lives and saying, well, you know, the good that he or she d did fi far outweighs this mistake that they made. So this cancel culture is only detrimental to what is good for the culture. Should we ignore the wrong that people do? No, I don't think so. But we should be able to respond with forgiveness and grace and even to just sit down and talk to a person and find out why he or she did that and how they feel about it and so forth and so on and give them every opportunity to right that wrong. So thank you for listening. That's my take on this cancel culture. I have a lot more to say and I'll probably say it in, a, in another video as we try to fight through and understand all of these different movements that are affecting us in our culture today. Thank you for listening to CSC. We appreciate your support. We appreciate every second that you listen to us. Please do hit the subscribe button if you haven't already done so. Hit the bell icon to be notified when there are new uh, videos. And we appreciate you. We like your support. Leave us comments. Let us know if you have any questions. Let us know that if there's any topic you want us to cover. We definitely do appreciate your feedback. So God bless you. And I'll see you next time.